everything from the good experience, the bad experiences, the ugly, everything all in between has a direct correlation between who I am right now and who I was and who I will be in the future. All things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So both good and bad, they shape us to be who we are so that what the enemy meant for our evil will end up being the very platform that God uses to help us in our testimony to save lives. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Confidence Restored podcast presented by CC America, also known as Confidence Centers of America and hosted by Tamaria Jordan. This is a show designed to help you build your confidence, increase your faith and get mentally fit to overcome any trials and tribulations you may encounter. Through personal testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation, Tamaria and guests seek to inspire and uplift you. This message is delivered by us, CCing you on lessons learned in hopes of encouraging you regardless of where you are in life. Enjoy the show. We have Leanna Latrice Austin, the host of the Sister Girl Circle podcast. Hey, y'all. We are so excited to have you. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm at peace. That's that's how I'm doing. I'm at peace. I love that. At peace. And considering all of the turmoil in the world, being at peace is a powerful place to be. So I am looking forward to us talking about that too um, tonight as we get into just your journey and really just talking to Leanna about the fact that when we think about our lives, that it's not linear. And I am grateful for, I will say, the sisterhood and the relationship that I've been blessed to have with Leanna. We met each other many years ago, so I am thrilled to spotlight her tonight. And so I would actually like her to share with you all who she is. So Leanna, welcome to the show. And if you were meeting a stranger for the first time, who (laughs) would you say Leanna Latrice Austin is? So for everyone that who already knows me knows I'm coming from a really true place when I say this. So I will consider myself to be a very deep individual. Um, I'm very transparent. And I say that because even the people may not know this, but before we even started, there were some questions that, you know, I had to prepare myself for. And this is the one question that I'm like, how am I going to describe who I am? Am I going to talk about who, what do I do for a living as a teacher? Am I going to talk about my relationships and my roles as a mom and a wife? Am I going to talk about my character and who I was and who I'm going to be and what I'm striving to be like? So I just, it really just summed up, wait, pause, come back. Who am I? I'm a very deep individual. And I feel like that just kind of (laughs) transfers into everything I do. I overthink everything. I love to reflect and study. Um, Very curious about the worlds and people around me. So I ask a lot of questions. Um, I love trying new things. I love figuring things out for myself, which can be a bad thing sometimes. Um, And so um, ultimately, though, when people meet me, I just want them to experience the nature of who God is. And so I want people to be able to one day say, if they can't already, that I exude love and patience, graciousness, merciful Um, And just being merciful to others, um, want to be known to be kind and generous. So really all these other things, those titles and those roles don't really play, make much of a difference if you're really not true to who we were intended to be, which is to be representatives of God, vessels used by God, or the temple of God. So really, I'm just carrying him everywhere I go. So really, when people um, who don't know me get to know me, I really want them to tap into that first. And then, of course, they get to see all the other craziness <laughs> that I'll take credit for, all the craziness. <laughs> well, I love that because I think that speaks volumes in terms of who we are as individuals. And you made me think about something, and it was something I thought about a long time ago, just through life situations. And it's who I am is not defined by what I do. Amen. And I know there's different variations of that, but literally what you just said is like, there's layers to you. You are right. a deep individual, which means that there's layers. It's not, it's not one, you're not one. Size fits all, sure not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> through all the sizes, okay? Extra small to extra large. And I'm loving yeah. every part of that process. And so, yeah, that's hard. It's hard to put me in a box because like, I just overthink, okay, well, what 
what do what do people want to hear? What do people want to like or see? Like and that just gets me out of who I really am. So the honest answer is I'm just a deep individual. And so you love it or you hate it. It is what it is. <laughs> yes. So, you know, what? speaking of which, when you mentioned being a deep individual and you mentioned some of the roles, which we'll get into that, but how have life events shaped who you are and making you that deep individual? That's a very powerful question. Um, because I think it has a direct everything from the good experience, the bad experiences, the ugly, everything all in between has a direct correlation between who I am right now and who I was and who I will be in the future. Um, ironically, a lot of the bad events that have shaped my life from childhood traumas, sexual abuse, the influence of drugs that was in my family, thanks be to God, it no longer is an issue in my uh, family. Um, the depression, the loneliness, uh, promiscuity as a teenager leading to a teenage pregnancy. I mean, you name it, um, financial struggles, <laughs> all of those experiences that I've been through in my life. Um, if it weren't for those experiences, I wouldn't have been able to appreciate the grace and the mercy and the truth and love of the character of God. Um, I wouldn't have been able to appreciate the provision of God. I wouldn't have been able to see the faithfulness of God in my life um, and the chances and the many billions of chances that he's given me and those I'm connected with who've also experienced the same things. And so I really think that all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So both good and bad, they shape us to be who we are so that what the enemy meant for our evil will end up being the very platform that God uses to help us in our testimony to save lives. And so I think that that question is just, it's such a weighty question, but you know, it most definitely all the good and the bad has made me who I am today. So, and who, again, who I'm tr striving to become, which is to be more like Jesus. I love that. And you know what? I love the realness of it. And <laughs> because I think sometimes to the point that you shared, we try to hide those things. And you just said, you know what, I'm a deep individual, but then you shared some of your life experiences relatively quickly, but you also, you, you, the fact that you were okay with sharing those things speaks volumes because to your point, which you said earlier, what the enemy meant for bad, God will turn it around for good. So I just want to say that I am proud of you and I commend you for your transparency and allowing God to use you. So I can't wait until we start talking about your podcast, The Sister Girl Circle, because I know it's going to be powerful. And speaking of which, when you think about your faith and you think about the different challenges that you just mentioned in terms of how life events have shaped who you are, how do you navigate those challenges coupled with being a military wife and mother of four? So, so let's preface that question with me saying this first, like I haven't always been so transparent. Um, growing up, mm -hmm. like in high school, especially and in college, I was very ashamed of just the experiences that I mentioned. Um, nowadays, um, it's easy for me to share that um, because I see so much hurt and especially the woman God has allowed me to come into contact with. It is easier for me to share my life story because for some reason, my soul and another sister's soul will kind of connect and like for some reason, and, and I give it the credit to God where we just kind of divulge. And I don't know if that's just our character as women sometimes when we when we feel another woman's heart, we can kind of sense what they may have been through. And so we share those stories. But again, for a very, very long time, um, I kind of grew up in a culture where don't, don't, don't put our family business out there. Don't, you know, shame us. Don't uh, embarrass yourself or other people like that. And so I, I come, I've come, I grew up in a situation where, you know, if I spoke, I felt like it would do more harm than good, even though I felt like there was freedom in that, um, um, advocacy in that. And so for so long, I kept my mouth shut. And for speaking of the military situation, it wasn't until my husband deployed for a year, which he is 
in um, he's the National Guard. And so he's only in it part time. So it's not really something they do often is deploy that uh, long. And so for that journey for me, God had to take those experiences, those childhood traumas that I kind of masked and put on a front and made it seem like, oh, you know, I'm unaffected by that. You know, I forgave those people. I'm done. God showed me, no, you didn't. You didn't forgive these people. You're still hurting. This still affects you. It affects how you interact with everybody in your life, from your husband to your kids, to your friends, to your coworkers, everybody. There's no one that has been on touched by just the, the the wrath and the anger and the hurt that you've been carrying and you've just been blind to see it and for some reason God had to take a separation God had to take my husband deploying for a year which is a, its own story because you know come to find out he wasn't really supposed to deploy when there was a backstory to that so um but God let it happen anyway so there's nothing that goes in front of God that just isn't cleared by him. So he allowed it to happen anyway. And he used that experience for me to to really fight my own demons. And so, Mm. and it was only through God's counsel and the community of faith of the people who God put in my life, such as my mom. Um, He put some sisters in my life. Uh, Shout out to my friends, Latoya and Ashley. Um, He put my mother-in-law. He put different people in place in my life to not only assist me (laughs) in my physical needs with help with the kids or um, help for school and, you know, having that strong community, but it was also times where I just needed me time. And my me time may have looked like spending time with God. My me time may have looked like me working out. You know, my me time may have looked like different things, but God used all of that for me and through journaling to kind of track and trace the root of all of my issues. And so Mm. through that, it kind of birthed this, you know, idea, okay, you need to share your story. And in one of my courses um, that I was taking, I had to basically chart out chronicle all the significant events in my life. And I noticed that, wow, God is, God has definitely kept me from a lot. Even though I've been through things, he still was me, even though I put myself through things, you know, um, God still had his hand over my life. And like, I think a lot of people would be blessed by hearing and being encouraged that, you know, God is for you. Even when you feel like you're not for yourself and you just kind of throw that relationship away with God, that he's still for you and he loves us so much. And like that became a reality for me during that season. And so I kind of clung to that and have been clinging since um, in desperation, just really to know more of him and just have him lead me and guide me because I, apart from him, can't do anything. <laughs> Now I feel like I'm oh, rambling. <laughs> no, you are. You know what? You are spot on. And it's so funny because literally the flow is it's just perfect is what I'll say. Because <laughs> to the point that you just shared, I am sure that there are a lot of people, myself included. And it's funny you mentioned like how sometimes God will take you through a period of separation or isolation to help you see those issues and those things where it's like, yes, it did hurt me and that's okay. And I think it's beautiful that you are recognizing that and saying, you know what, it does spill over into every single relationship that we have. So I'm sure this would bless a lot of people in terms of those different experiences. Can you share a specific moment that you remember or recall when you felt like, you know what, I'm going to give up on this. I'm going to give up on God. Like, I just, I don't know where I'm going to go, but I just don't feel like, I don't feel like adulting today. (laughs) How did you find the strength to persevere when you did not feel like feeling like it? I'm laughing because, um, you know, a lot of people who are connected with me probably will think that I might talk about, like, just like I said, the deployment was a very tough season for me. But even prior to that, prior to me even knowing my husband, I'm going to go way back. Um, college days. Um, this is when before I had my bachelor's and I, you know, single mom at the time, um, trying to finish out. It took me almost 10 years, nine years to be exact, to finish a four year degree being a single mom because juggling work and like just life. And and then I was running away from God. Um, I grew mm. up in church all my life. So I, I, gave my life to Christ around 11 years old and then repeated doing that every so often because I was just out there. Okay. Um, and so, 
um, in that moment of me being out there, I, you know, had a relationship that wasn't, you know, approved by God and I wasn't listening. God used every which way to warn me about it and I just kept ignoring it. Um, and so in that situation, it was a week before my finals. Um, and this was my senior year. So I was almost done with college. Um, and I missed my finals because I ended up finding out that I was pregnant. And I decided to selfishly abort the baby. That was not my first time doing something like that. Um, I did that a couple of times, actually. And the last time, though, that that had happened was this was this the moment. Um, and I felt shame. Like, I felt different that time. Before I did it, like, it was nothing. Like, oh, you know, whatever. God will forgive me. <laughs> but um, that last time, it was just something that I don't, and I was still going to church here and there. And so I remember hearing something about just basically being a murderer. I don't know. I, it just really connected with me. And I felt a lot of shame with it. And it took me out physically, of course. So I ended up missing my finals. And in that moment of being just out, I had like a reconnection moment with God and him just kind of showing mercy and, and grace because I had to repent. Like I just felt the urge to want to repent for that, which was unlike me at the time. Um, and so in doing so, I kind of just accepted the consequences like, okay, God, I, I messed up. I'm expecting to not pass these classes because there was like two that I ended up not going to take my finals for. And I ended up going back on campus trying to re-register for the courses that I just knew I was going to fail. And come to find out, grades posted and my one math course that I had failed, thought I was going to fail, I ended up passing with the C minus and I was so confused. <laughs> I was confused. I was like, God, oh, this must be an error because I did not take that final and I wasn't passing the course. It was a math class that I didn't have a prerequisite for. So I ended up, I don't know, it was just some things that just didn't make sense. And I was there, was struggling. The professor ended up leaving mid um, course. So we had a substitute oh, wow. professor and like, I just was like, oh my goodness. And so I ended up passing that class. And then the other course, I think it was like a coding class. Um, the professor was very gracious with me and let me still take it late. And she made it known that I never do this. She made me know like, this is not something that I do, um, but I definitely feel for you and, you know, just do your best and hopefully you make it out. And I did, and I give nothing but God the credit. I give every, I give God all the credit for me even having my degree, you know, and, and education because I knew that I did, I gave up on myself. And there was many mm -hmm. times when I just kind of left school partying and just kind of just focusing on the, the life that I had wished I had when I was younger in a strict, growing up in a strict Christian home. And so I just, God's graced me many times like that. That's just one instance, but on many occasions where I did fail or I gave up on myself and me falling short of that, God reminded me that no one is ever going to fulfill all of the laws and all of the commandments. And like, no one is going to be perfect. Only Jesus is, but it's when you operate in, him, when you're wearing him, when you have your armor on, where you can be successful and fight and be victorious. And so um, a part of God's kindness, and I'm not saying that God awards um, sin because there's still consequence to that, right. but what he shown me was that his kindness led me to repentance is because of his overwhelming kindness that made me rethink some things and made me say, wait, I don't deserve, like, I knew I didn't deserve that. And so it just made me mm. fall in love with him in different levels and got, and I got to know his character on different levels. It was more than just reading about Jesus's love in the Bible. It was more than just the head knowledge for me. And like I said, I'm kind of a nerd. So I love to learn and, um, you know, learn about things, but when it comes to the word, I was seeing God manifest himself as a person, a reality for my life and, and the experiences that I had, which is a beautiful thing. Because once you have those personal experiences with God, I feel like nothing, no one can deter you and try to convince you of something other than that. Like, um, so I'm certain that, you know, God is for me as he is for everyone else that um, belongs to him. And so it's just a matter of us being in alignment with that. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm off up here, at least I can be. And so just making sure that I'm in alignment with what he says about me and just doing what he asked me to do, because it's all in love. Like, it's never just um, 
and chastisement because he just wants to take all the fun away from us or like it's always in love. And so I'm learning that. I'm learning that. And so that's the beautiful thing. Here again, I'm going that's- around. <laughs> no, you're not. You are just fine. And you know what? That in yeah. and of itself is a whole word because oh. when you think about it, right. we can either live in, and it's funny, we have conviction, which is like the holy conviction, like, okay, right. get it together. I need you to get on the right path. But it, the word tells us that we don't have to live in condemnation. So to the point that you made, I think that's where the grace kicks in and you have that personal encounter where you can say, hey, I did make these mistakes. I did go down this path. I know it wasn't the best path, but I did. And and I always think to myself, God cannot heal what we don't reveal. Mm. And so what you said is very powerful because you were willing to, like you said, it felt different this time. It was like, okay, I... I know that this isn't right, but now, because you know what's funny? I went to a whole lot of altar calls, so I feel where you're coming from. <laughs> it's like, Lord, forgive me. And then it's like, all right, now, I need to get it together. Like, either I need to make a, a conscious decision to stop whatever this is, or, like, I can't keep going down every Sunday. Because, like, if you don't know, I feel like when you're a baby Christian, you just don't know. You're like, all right, well... I went out to the club uh, again, so <laughs> now we'll go back to the altar call tomorrow, and then next there was, week. It's funny, because there was a season in life where I was abusing God's grace, and we all have done that. Yes. I we all have gone through that phase, or some of us may be in that phase right now, but we take God's grace and kindness for granted. Oh. And the problem with that is God had to take me through my own relational issues where people I was really close and connected with, who I trusted and loved, they had to they had to be disloyal to me for me to see Mm. the parallel between God showing me, this is you with me. You're unfaithful in the relationship with me. And I had to use this relationship to show you yourself. Again, when we say God uses all things, he does. And through even our relationships, the closest to the ones that we consider our enemies, God uses all these things. And if you allow him, he'll take those blinders off. When you ask him, don't be surprised when he reveals things to you that, yeah, this, this is, and this is what God's heart was. He showed me, um, it was my first time reading in goodness. God helped me remember where it's at. I'll look it up real quick. Thank God for the internet. But um, he reminded me in the old Testament where he was like really, really just, kind of done with just Israel in general and just was like, you are an unfaithful generation. Like you are sitting here cheating on me with the world. Like you love Mm. the creation more than the creator. Like I am everything that you need. And for some reason that hit home in my heart, in my spirit, um, when God had me go through some of those unfaithful seasons of just friends and people who I was connected connected with to be disloyal to me, um, that hurt. And God had to show me myself through that, like I said. And so in that weird juxtaposition of my natural relationships and my spiritual relationship with God, God was showing me myself. And then he was also showing me his love for me. And he was challenging me to say, okay, now if I've granted you mercy and grace, and I love you still, and I provide for you lavishly, I'm going to need you to do that for those who have hurt you. I'm going to need you to do that with your enemies. And that was hard. That was hard. (laughs) I can't sit here and act like, you know, he's just like, I was like, yeah, no God. (laughs) But, um, Again, and God has a way of humbling us as well, too. So for a while, I resisted God. And, you know, unfortunately, he puts situations where if you don't humble yourself, he'll have to humble you. And unfortunately, the season that I'm in right now, I can say that's kind of a part of what I'm going through is God saying, okay, since you didn't want to sit your butt down and get yourself together and sanctify yourself, now I'm going to have to help you do it. And no matter how long it's going to take, this is going to get done because I love you and Mm. I'm faithful and I have my own name to protect. And I said, who Mm. in a good work in you is going to complete it. So uh, come on, are you going to work with me through the process or what? So um, I'm working with him. <laughs> Let's just say, I feel like one of those kids who got caught and it's kind of like, you know, you have to learn your lessons sometimes the hard way and we don't realize that, you know. And right. So, you know. That's powerful. So when you, when you think about all those different experiences, and again, I, I really appreciate your transparency. Can you tell us about the inspiration for starting the Sister Girl Circle podcast? 
I give all credit to God because when I tell you I was minding my own business, doing my own little thing, and God ordered my steps, okay? So I believe that when we ask God to lead us, to guide us, he says in his own word that he'll do that for us, that he'll pave the way for us, that the little things from just even me knowing you back in the college days, having no idea that we'd reconnect again years later, to having God have the very first prophetic word spoken over my life when I was still again in college, it was... um this old man who I never seen in my life, me seeing an error on my bill. Okay. And I was like in the um, education building, I mean, excuse me. I was like in the student center building where, you know, you take care of financial aid. There isn't a specific like school of education it, in that time I was at TCC. And so I looked at my bill, he uses errors to slow me down. And this guy just staring at me and you know, I acknowledged him. He was an older man. He was like, acknowledge him still staring at me and I'm like, okay. Let's... And he was just spoke very seriously. And he said, you'll be a professor soon enough. And I'm like, okay. I'm thinking after I kind of went home and talked to God about it, I was like, uh, was this an angel that I entertained? Like, what is this? And my, the youth pastor at the time had told me, uh, I don't remember if you remember Anthony Bass. He used to I be do. A youth pastor at our, uh, Calvary. And so he was like, yeah, sometimes God speaks prophetically through people to kind of give you a word, especially in a rough season and, you know, just for you to hang on to. And still to this day, well, I guess this is kind of manifesting now, but he gave me that word. All the while, I'm thinking this has something to do with my career because at the time I was pursuing um, a degree in education. So I'm like, oh, so maybe I'm going to be a professor. Cool. Um, but God had other plans. And so later on, coming to find out the definition, if you look it up, of a professor is also someone who professes one's faith. And so for oh, a while, wow. God has been challenging me with opening up my mouth and speaking God's word, especially when he you know, unctions me to do it, um, whether it's over myself, over my family, over friends, over people who I just meet. And so um, God's been challenging me with that. And then he's used people in my life um, to speak the prophetic about preaching the word um, and going to school for ministry. And so that's kind of where I'm currently, that's currently what I'm doing now. And so as God releases me, I am going to be faithful to that. And so it's funny the day we ran into each other again, the people may not know, the day before, me and a sister, uh, Latoya, we went out um, to a uh, prayer night, an all night prayer night. And that night, the pastor spoke a prophetic word over me again. And I, and he kind of called me out I, um, unexpectedly. And one of the things that he mentioned was God blessing my hands and giving me a business and restoring all that I've lost financially. And I'm just like, God, that's not, I'm not in school for business. I don't know what business you're talking about. Like, if this is you, I'm going to need you to guide me and tell me what exactly I'm supposed to be doing. The very next day is when I run into you and I had no idea that you even had a podcast, ma'am. Okay. Cause I got rid of my social media accounts a while ago. So I just <laughs> didn't know, you know, and so running into you, I'm thinking, Oh, let me talk to you about, you know, serving stuff. Like, and you're like, Oh, you know, and so just naturally you bringing that up. I feel like that was God ordained appointed time for you to share what you needed to share, to answer the prayer that I had prayed that you had no idea that happened. And for God to kind of, and in that moment, it just was like a fire ignited because all the nice. while my husband was deployed, God was ushering me to journal. Well, I was already journaling, but journaling specifically my devotions with him as it pertains to my personal like grow like growth moments, like in the word, like specific messages. And he's mm -hmm. been kind of challenging me to write a book potentially, which I'm not releasing anytime soon. But until God tells me, you know, that's when I will. But I, so God has already kind of been speaking to me about these things. And then so I called it the Sister Girl Podcast because I thought about the women of God who I'm connected with, my sisters in Christ. Think about in our in the, the melanaceous community that we live in, you know, we usually, you know, um, approach each other and say, hey, girl, you know, that's just kind of a, a name that we generally refer to one another as. And so I thought about all the times I've been connected just with women who are in the faith or not. And we just kind of share our heart and our story. And I felt like, you know what, how beautiful would it be if God used these connections, these people that I come across with and share our faith? Like maybe your right. faith from mine, but maybe this is an opportunity to talk about it and, and just have devotion and dig deep. And I don't know what God's going to have planned for this. I'm literally flying the plane as it's being built. 
Okay. So, I, so people may think I have like a list of series of episodes that I already have prepared, which I feel like I do, but I'm, I'm literally honoring God in terms of when he wants me to release things, what he wants me to say, and everything that I will be sharing will be connected with experiences I have gone through. So never will I say out my mouth anything that I haven't personally gone through that I can personally attest like I whatever I say out of my mouth is something that I've had to live for myself I don't ever want to share something that I'm ignorant of or that I'm you know putting up a front like you know I got this area of my life all together without having to talk about the fight to get there (laughs) so I want to be transparent because we need that and especially in in our in the faith community, um, I know there's so many people that run astray from God, the relationship with God, because of just the misrepresentations that are out there. Although we know that there will be people who are planted to purposely deceive and to purposely dissuade people from God, and so just God had already warned us that my people die spiritual deaths and probably natural deaths too, because of the lack of knowledge. And so like, we're not connecting our sort to the source of life to understand life. And so we're doing life mm. all wrong and we're just surprised that death's happening all around us, but we shouldn't really be surprised because we're not connected to the source of life. And so um, I'm just, I'm just tired of finding on the wrong side of the, of the battle. And I'm, I'm just excited to be joining on God's team now and to be, you know, fighting alongside the side I know is going to win. So we can call yes. it a fight, but <laughs> you know, I'm here for that. Cause when you said that, you know, what came to mind, the faith versus the fake community, oh, okay. because it's literally, and you're right. The word does warn us that in the end times people will right. be deceived. And so it makes me think about the fact, and I love what you said. You don't want to talk about something that you feel like, oh, you know what? I'm ignorant of that because I don't have that experience. But to the point that you made early on when you spoke about your testimony, right? everything that you've been through will allow you to reach a different demographic. Exactly. And so you are not going to be part of the fake community, the one that pretends that everything is perfect and that it's a cakewalk walking with God. Because even in the Bible, Even Jesus said, can this cup pass from me? Because walking is said it and we would be persecuted just like he was. And so it's like when you really are walking in faith, it's not easy. But I love your transparency. I love, like you said, you're going to let God order your steps. So the topics will be whatever he gives you to share at that time. But I think people need to see the realness because... They start to judge. And I I wrote a poem a little while ago and I said, you can't judge God off the actions of man. We all have free will. Don't you understand? Because literally we do, but people judge God because we fall short. And God is like, I'm not them. Like, I didn't tell them to do that. That was a personal decision. So I appreciate the fact that, like you said, you're going to let him use you and guide you and share what he puts on your heart to share. And to your point, the, the Melanaceous crew and the individuals going through things. And, even that podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, what's funny. I use it now too. Okay. Um, like whether we are, whether we're Melanaceous or not, like God right. is like, okay, I got you. Like, I'm going to help you through this, but you have to trust me. And I love that you're trusting him to order your steps and that you're also open because many, many of us aren't open to listening. So- we put up fronts. We put up fronts like everything's all good. And so yes. it, it sometimes challenges me because, you know, when people do, I, you know, we do have, I have, a, I will say I'm blessed with a caring community. I've been blessed with a very big family. Um, and so when people ask, like, you know, how are you doing? It's so easy to just be like, fine, I'm okay. God's good, you know. When that's not how I'm feeling and that's not how I'm doing. And that's so right. you have to kind of, but then again, you also have to be able to be discerning to say, okay, I don't want everyone to know everything about my life at all times, because then that's how the enemy can attack. And, you know, you don't want to put yourself out there like that, but, you know, just having that God does admonish us to, you know, confess our sins with our sisters and brothers in Christ and the people who we're close with that we know that, okay, you got me, you're going to put me in check. You're going to pray with me, for me, 
Um, we're going to iron sharpens iron, like we're in this together. And so that's the community who, you know, I'm trying to cling to. And so, because this faith walk isn't a cakewalk, it's really a fight. And so that's my first episode, y'all. It's going to be about the war that's within. I mean, we have these wars and rumors of wars that are happening outside of us in the nations, but no one wants to talk about the war that's happening within yourself, like in your head, in your heart, in your emotions. And again, it affects how you deal with people. And so I think that this I call it my, my military wife life, even though it was kind of short lived in comparison to people who've been it, in it for years and years and years. I've only had to have that one year to say, wow, I respect all people in uniform and their families who have to sacrifice and go through it because it's not easy. Um, people say that without having gone through it themselves that, oh, yeah, you know, I know it's not. it is not easy, especially when you have a family. And so. You know, I just wanted to use an opportunity to talk about our ultimate warrior, and that's Jesus Christ. And he's already paid the price. He's already won the battle. The thing is, like I said, we have to be in alignment with him and we have to wear him, his armor, so that we can be prepared to fight because the enemy is so upset. He is so upset and he's trying to take down as many people as he can. And he's being, he's successful to an extent um, of bringing down God's people in depression, bringing God, bringing down God's people in comparison. Because I had a problem with that at that point, comparing myself with others and feeling like, oh, if I don't look like, sound like, not producing like these people here, then I must not meet. Just the enemy's voices, you know, being able to detect and discern what God's saying about you versus what, you know, the enemy is saying about you. And it's it's a silent killer because it usually it happens in your head where no one else can really hear it. It's super obvious when you, you know, know people who are verbally abusive or just like that are around you that are not speaking God's word, but it's so much harder to detect when it's happening within yourself. So God's had to take me on that journey of like prepping me and training me to fight. And so I'm kind of excited to share some nuggets that God um, illuminated to me personally that I'm still walking out myself today, every day. Um, yes. and that will be my first episode, which is why I used a Memorial Day to be the day to um, launch that first episode to honor those who sacrificed their lives. But ultimately, it's really a homage to pay uh, honor to the ultimate person who sacrificed his life for all humanity. And so I'm just really yes. excited for what God does with that. So we'll see. <laughs> yes, I'm excited for you. And I'm so proud of you again. Like, yeah, I think that's amazing. And I, I love what you said. This faith walk isn't a cakewalk. I'm sure looking is. forward to hearing <laughs> it because you have said so many things and you're right. Uh, the enemy is waging war because he knows his time is short. So I'm proud of you for stepping out. And you know what's funny? That's how you know you're on the right track too. When oh. the enemy starts attacking you, because he'll leave us alone when we are not mess. He was like, you know what? Oh, you good. You, you're you down in yourself. So I'm going to let you keep going down that hole. But yet when you start trying to get on the right path, it's like the attacks Moment. grow because he's like, wait, hold on. I'm losing my grip on them. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I need to rope you back in when you start to try to veer onto the right path. And he's like, I'm trying to pull you over here in the mud. Have you rolling around? Having you forget who you are. So I love it. And actually that brings me to the next question. How do you maintain your confidence and stay motivated to pursue your goals in the face of obstacles and setbacks or the enemy's voice trying to discourage you? That's a beautiful question because for so long, I actually struggled with confidence. That is self-confidence. And I, it took me to a place, God had to take me to a place where he had to remind me. It was in, I think, 1 Corinthians 10. Um, and this is the message version where he says, forget about being self-confident. It's useless. Cultivate God confidence. Um, because again, I can't reiterate, we are nothing without God. We can do nothing apart from him that's lasting and worthwhile. And so for me to be successful in anything that I do, I have to be able to discern what God says for me. <laughs> like I have to be able to be connected to him. And so whenever anyone's venturing out and doing, you know, whatever it is that they feel that is on their heart, their passions, or what they feel that God has said for them to do in their assignment and in their territory, that they need to stay connected because, you know, they need to be able to discern 
who's talking to you? Who who are you channeling? Um, so that because if it is indeed God, you know it's going to be successful because His hand is on it, and He's the one that wills in us to do and to want to desire to do things that He's called us to do. So we have to remember it's not our tasks, our projects, our podcasts, or anything, our messages. This is God's ultimate message, and the most important thing to me is, like I said, being connected to that true one true vine. And so that kind of gives me, that takes the pressure off of me having to perform perfectly. Because again, that's another issue I had was trying to be a perfectionist. And um, for those of you that are still struggling with astrology, like, you know, I know I, I'm, I'm, I'm born in September. So traditionally people have known Virgos to be people who are trying to make sure everything is just right. And so I struggled with that in my humanity, but thank God that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. So I'm not stuck in that box of what people call me. I am who God calls me to be. And so having to just reemphasize that word over and over and over every single day, every moment, really it's moment to moment sometimes, um, helps me, again, stay on mission, stay on task, stay focused to see God's will fulfilled in our, in our life. And again, really, even when I think God honors how hard we try and our passions and our desires to want to please him, again, it's fueled by him anyhow. But once we start stepping into like that pride where we feel like, oh, I did that. Like, I, you know, I graduated. I did this. I did that. Once we start saying that we did things apart from Christ, that's where that pride steps in. And God will put that in check real quick. <laughs> He'll put that in check real quick. He might let you feel like you something for a little while until something's washed <laughs> away. And then you, what do you have to say for yourself? That's so true. They're crying and calling out an Abba Father, come save me, come help me. Like what's, and so, you know, we don't want to be like, is it Nimrod? Was it Nimrod? Who was it that king that was just filling himself? No, Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me. It was King Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. yes. When they, uh, yeah. And he was he like, he, got, he learned he much. And God had to put him in check. And he was out there in that wilderness looking silly with them donkeys and that, in that grass and, you know, just a way yes. different from the kingdom that he was in. And so I just, I just want to always, I've been humbled by God and I never once again want to be humbled by God. So (laughs) to do it for yourself um, with God's support, of course, to just do that. So I know I'm probably going in circles with that question, but immediately when I think about how, how to be confident in pursuing whatever it is that God places in your heart to do, just give it back to know that God's in the middle of it. If you keep God in the center of it, everything will work out fine. And even when you stumble and even when you fall short, God still uses that yes. for his glory. So it's like a win-win in a way. And so it just kind of helps take the pressure off of you and you can just enjoy life um, a little bit better than feeling the pressure because that's a lot of pressure. Um, so. You brought up a lot of really good points and I I love it. And even when you think about the graphic for today's show and the pictures that you sent, one of them says, always live for silver linings. And I literally, when I looked at the pictures, I said, you know what? I want to use all three. And I was trying to figure out how to use them. (laughs) And I said, okay, you know what? I love all three. And it's almost like a a progression. And when I thought about, life and what I know we've talked about, it made me realize that life is never linear, but things always come full circle. And what you just said, I feel like is a good tie into that and to connect the dots because what may seem like a circle, like, oh, I'm just going round and round, but sometimes we need that. And I think you helping us realize that, you know what, it's not a straight path. And sometimes you might feel like you have to go back to the beginning, but that's because God is like, I'm trying to get you where I need you to be, but everything is going to be connected. Whenever whenever he wants to connect the dots, he's going to connect the dots. And what you're it's- saying is reminding me of the Israelites in that 40 year journey. And what wasn't really meant to take that long, really. <laughs> it was only a few days short of having to get where they needed to go. But that period of really just detoxing after being delivered and saved from just bondage, when we think about our bondages and whatever those things may have been, when God is like trying to detox us from those environments and those idols and those people and those habits and those things, like it does take time. And so we want to rush it so bad. Um, but me and my husband most recently heard a devotion that talks about um, 
the difference in time. Like we either can measure it in terms of hours and minutes and seconds, okay, quantitatively, or we can look at it qualitatively where we're looking at moments that are captured. Like what are you doing in the moments that God gives you to be a blessing? What are you doing in the moments that God gives you to be generous and kind and give a word and, you know, to be um, a servant? And so versus, you know, God, when are you going to take me out of this situation that I'm in? Like, so focused on yourself in that aspect. And so I am appreciating this wilderness season, I'll call it, that um, I'm going through because it definitely is making me see the miraculous hand of God providing even in those desert seasons. And then also helping me get connected with his heart. Because so often we like want to like re- rely on getting to know what was in his hand versus getting to know him as a person. And because he is a person. And so we just are, we need to stop being gold diggers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you we, know what? That's real. Well, from God, like, you know, we got to get out of that mentality and look at why am I created? Why did you create me? Who are you? Like, why do you love us so much? Like, you know, just thinking about those essential foundational questions that we only really think about when someone dies or so um, when there's like a big life event that happens, that's when we want to call on his name, but why not call on him when things are doing, things are going great. Why not call on him just every day in a, in a very, just in the monotony of life. Like we just need him. Um, all right. So Amen to that. So you won't get me started on things. Let me just. <laughs> no, you know, what? I appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate you. And I know that God does too, because whoever is meant to hear this, I know it's going to bless them. And your show, the sister girl circle is going to bless a lot of people as well, because like we said earlier, we can faith it or we can fake it. And I appreciate the fact that you're faithing it. You're sharing your <laughs> faith and your testimony. So one of the, the last of the two questions I have for you, one is what is your favorite scripture or personal affirmation that you live by? Man, that one was hard. When you asked me that, um, look, y'all, y'all don't know. Y'all, she had sent me these questions a while ago. I, I had time to think about it. I did. But I really, it changes every, depending on the season that I'm in. And so what's keeping me That's right fair. now is that just Romans 8, 28, just all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Because often we just think about, you know, like I said, for me, I de- compartmentalize life into two areas, the good and then the bad. And so I often feel like, you know, historically in my journey with God, I really cried out to him just in the seasons where I'm like really in need. And I failed the test of just like the Israelites, when things would go good, God would say, don't forget me. Do not forget me in that promised land. And so unfortunately, there will be times when things are going great. And I, and I'm sure many people do the same, forget about God because things are going great. And we might give them an amen. Thank you, Jesus, you know, in the morning, but then that's when we kind of, run back into that cycle of just having that idolatrous lifestyle and heart where we're just falling in love with the things that God has blessed us with versus the person of who he is. And so for me right now, I just have to constantly remind myself that even the through the bad, God's going to work that out for my good. And when things are good, to remember that, okay, I have to keep him my number one. Like he's my number one in everything. So trying to balance those two worlds right now. <laughs> That's so real. That is so real. I think there's a song where it says, um, not after your heart. Oh no, not after your hand, but like after your heart. Something okay. to that effect. I think it's by the truth. D-A-T-R-U-T-H. I'll find it and I'll have to send it to you. Okay. Um, but I think that this has been awesome. And some of the questions you actually answered in the other questions. So, uh, what I will ask you though, is, is there anything that you wanted to share that maybe I did not ask you about, or that, um, we didn't cover tonight, even from the questions that, um, that we were planning to cover that you would like to share with our audience? Um, I just want to let whoever's watching know that God is definitely, Um, a person worth knowing. And if you've ever given him an opportunity in the past and you feel like you've been disappointed because of your circumstances or because of 
just your own personal like desires. Like you feel like, okay, this is fun. Like I like having, I like doing this. I know God says I'm not supposed to, or I like seeing this person, even though I feel like, you know, it's not from you, God. And it's just fun. Like, remember there's always, you know, consequences to our actions, even if they're not always immediately visible. And so I just kind of want to admonish the people of God more specifically, people who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, people who've had those encounters with Jesus, people who've had, you know, developed their relationship with God to come back to him and just to remember your first and true husband in Jesus Christ. And that, you know, I pray for like the healing that needs to take place in so many people, like whether you're a person who's um, in relationship with God or not, like I just really notice that there's a lot of healing that needs to take place in in the world. And so whether you were the victim of some type of abuse or harm and danger, if you were the one who was the abuser and you just come, have come to find out like, that's just not what life is meant to be. I just um, encourage you to just to reach out to God and, and just to cry out to Jesus and for him to just kind of like take precedence in your life because Again, apart from him, you can't accomplish anything. Um, Not saying that there are people who still are successful without him, but life comes and goes just like that. And the eternity that we have to spend, I'd much rather spend with Jesus on my side than to be separated from him. And that was never his intent is to be separated from his people, from his creation. He is long suffering and purposely waiting patiently for us as humanity to come back to to him. And so, you know, he doesn't will for anyone to die and perish. He wants everyone to come to knowledge of who he is and he's a good God. Um, and so I think that's just all I really care about at the end of the day is just the souls, because I know that's what God cares about. And so, um, you know, I'm not saying I got it all together and neither does anyone else in this world have everything all together, but we have someone who has walked that perfect life and who also understands our struggle. So he's not a God that's so far removed from humanity because he became human and he understands the limitations and the struggles that we experience. The only difference is he didn't sin. And so through his life and sacrifice, you know, I just hope that like I said, that the people who may be listening will give Jesus a chance, a real chance um, to be in control and to lead because he only wants the best for us and has a life and eternity that he wants to spend with us um, to enjoy, to enjoy him and for him to enjoy us. So, I mean, that would be the only thing I would want to say. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Leanna, for joining. Thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Don't forget to share this with a friend because you never know who could be blessed by the testimony that has been shared. Because to Leanna's point earlier, we can faith it or we can fake it. Like she said, a lot of times, especially as a believer, it's easy for us to fake like everything's okay when we really may not be okay. Um, So I appreciate your honesty, your transparency. And as a reminder, the Sister Girl Circle podcast will be debuting on Memorial Day, as she mentioned, to pay homage to the person who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And her episode is This Faith Walk Isn't a (laughs) Cakewalk. Um, So thank you, Leanna. Thank you to our listeners. And I guess on that note, just keep on keeping on. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another live taping of the Confidence Restored podcast by CC America. We are grateful that you tune in week after week and join us for testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation. Please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and let others know that you are listening to the Confidence Restored podcast. You can also now buy us a coffee to show appreciation at buymeacoffee.com forward slash America. Until next time, be blessed.